How are you guys doing tonight? Um, my name is uh, Steve Rosenberg. I am with uh, Empire Industries, property management company. Uh, my partner, uh, Pete Newbig, oh, there he is. Uh, he and I are both uh, investors. Uh, we were PIG members. Uh, I was a PIG back in 2004, and Pete was 2002, 2001, yeah. Um, Pete and I, a quick history, we uh, initially partnered together on an apartment complex way back when with some other PIG members, and uh, went in on that. It was about a 39-unit complex. We purchased that, owned that for several years, sold it, uh, made a profit. He and I took that money and started buying some single-family houses. So we're just like you guys. We're investors. We buy properties. We're in it every day, uh, just like everyone else is. Um, currently, right now, Pete and I own just over 30 uh, single-family <coughs> properties and an apartment complex. Uh, as we were growing uh, our portfolio of houses, we tried to you know, do everything on our own without a, uh, any property management, any help. Um, one of the problems we were running into is we were making a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes that we were emotionally attached to our properties. We were not um, uh, making the right decisions on the tenants we were putting in. We weren't evicting them when we should. We weren't doing the background. So we basically got to a point to where we thought that maybe it's better that we remove ourselves from the uh, process and hire a property management company. Um, as we did that, we felt that we had a lot of history. Uh, we had owned properties for about six or seven years. So we started interviewing some companies, and we wanted to see who we wanted to have to manage our houses. We knew what we wanted, and uh, we started seeing a lot of red flags. The first thing we didn't like, uh, personally at least, is none of the properties management companies that we talked to actually owned any houses. So we kind of thought that was a problem, or how are they going to know what it's like to deal with tenants, deal with vacancies, deal with make readies if they've never actually had to cut the check for a mortgage themselves. Um, some of the other problems that we saw were they wanted us to have about a two to three month escrow. And at the time, we had about 20 houses. And for us, that was going to be about you know, forty to $60,000 sitting with someone else. Uh, anytime they talked to a tenant, they were going to charge us a, an hourly rate. Um, if we sold the property, they wanted a percentage. It was just a lot of things that it, it really made no use to actually own the house at that point. We thought you know, we, we were going to make no money. We were going to lose money on it. So at that point, Pete and I sat down and we thought, okay, you know, we can, we can do this if we just remove ourselves from the process emotionally and create a structured company to manage our houses. And we set up uh, policies, procedures, got everything in place the way we would want it through the eyes of an investor managing a house, not really through a property manager managing a house for money. So we kind of did it backwards. We set up a lot of infrastructure, foundation, plumbing, if you will, of how we wanted things to run. Um, and we started having a lot of success. We had a lot of tenants staying with us. We had, I would say, about a 95% occupancy rate with our houses. We started buying more houses, which is how we got to the 30-plus house uh, price range. And uh, what we did after that is we started having other investors start coming to us, some lifestyle members, some rich club members, people we knew because we're you know, in the business like everybody else asking us if we could manage their houses for them. Our system is all web, internet based, and it's scalable. So we thought, yeah, we could do that. So what happened was is um, we started managing people's houses about two years ago. Right about now, we're managing just over 200 houses. We're registered with the Better Business Bureau. Uh, we have owners that are in Guam, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Canada, all over the U.S., um, where else? Yeah, all, all in Houston, a lot of owners in Houston, obviously. Um, and we have a full-time office manager, deals with all tenant relations. We have a maintenance supervisor that does all QA for any maintenance that's going on with the property, any problem that arises. He's kind of on our side to make sure that the job is done correctly, to make sure that it's rectified without having the owner to get involved. Um, the owners and the uh, tenants have a 
toll-free 800 number. They can call in. They can talk to any of us. Uh, normally, they're talking to our office manager. Uh, we have a maintenance hotline uh, where they can call in. They can leave a maintenance request. Uh, we also have an emergency extension. 24 hours a day, they can get a hold of us. One of the, uh, one of the main things, uh, my, my normal day job is I'm an airline pilot. So I travel all over the world. And when we, Pete and I created this, we wanted to make sure that anywhere we are, I can see what's going on with the company. And initially, this was just for Pete and I to run our properties, to stabilize the ship. We never even thought of we were going to manage other people's houses. All we wanted to do was make sure that we weren't going to go out of business. And we didn't realize it at the time, but what it has evolved into now by having everything web-based and internet-based for the owners, uh, that is a huge plus, is the tenants will now get a web login portal. And what happens is, is the tenant can log into the system. They can place a maintenance request right there online. It goes right into our system. They can uh, make ACH bank payments for the rent. We're set up that we can do auto monthly drafts. And we even take credit card payments from the tenant. Basically, everything that we can do to get the money from the tenant to get it to the owner, we've thought of every way we can to structure it. The owner will also get a login. The owner can log in. They can see the tenant's register, the tenant's balance. Any service ticket, maintenance thing that's going on uh, with their property, they'll be able to view it online and see what is going on with the property. Um, hmm? Yeah, they can pull all financial reports 24-7. They can view profit and loss, uh, capital improvements, delinquency reports. Pretty much anything associated with their property, they can view right online. They don't need to call us, because obviously we've got owners all over the world, and they want to make sure that they can get it, which you know is, is a huge plus, obviously. Um, once we get the rent, we wire the money right to the owner's account. So we don't uh, mail it or anything like that. As soon as we get it, we wire it out. It comes in your account. We don't charge anything uh, for that service. Um, when we get a vacant tenant, a vacant property, we step in, we get the power turned on. Um, you know, just our experience in the past is we've had a lot, Pete and I personally have had a lot of properties that have been broken into, uh, vandalized, and uh, turns out that, you know, when a property's vacant, they see that red tag on there, they're in there stripping the cable out as soon as they see it. So we were advised by the Houston uh, police officer that if you turn the power on, they're not that dumb that they won't mess with it once the power's on. So as soon as the property's vacant, we have corporate accounts. Yeah, um, We go ahead and we, we take care of it. We get the power on. We get it taken care of for you. So you don't have to worry about that. And obviously for the make ready, that's got to be done as well. The, all the information uh, for a tenant is loaded into our system on the server. So anything that wants to be, uh, that, that has to do with that tenant or with that property maintenance wise or tenant wise is always on the system. So whenever they go online, they can see everything. One of the things that we did once we started growing our company is we started going to every vendor that we did business with. And we said, listen, we're going to bring you more clients, but the deal is, is we need a better price than you give anyone else, and you have to give the same price that anybody we send you. We can't guarantee they'll use you, but if your price is better than everybody, chances are they probably will. So we went through several different vendors until we got the right partners that we needed. Um, we partnered with a huge uh, maintenance company in Houston. A lot of these people are lifestyle vendors also. Um, probably because of the amount of business we give them, we're probably getting a little better price break than somebody who owns one or two homes that, that calls them. But um, all invoices for everything comes through us. So we see if the price is different because we use them also for our own properties. So we figure if they're ripping you off, they're probably ripping us off. And then we will either talk to them or stop using them. Um, but we personally have seen about a 40% savings in our maintenance in the last 12 months just using this company that we use through the system of how we use them. So we, we've definitely seen a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, as far as leasing the properties, we use licensed agents. We, instead of us having an agent in our office that's running from, we run properties from Texas City to Conroe to Katy to Humble. So to us, it seemed ineffective to have one person running all over that doesn't really know the area. So what we did is we went to each part of the city and got the best agent we could find 
and said, look, we'll give you all of our business. Can't guarantee they'll use you. We'll give you all our business, but we need to make sure you know the market, you know what's going on, and you put the person in, but we want a three-month guarantee on anybody you put in. If that person punches out, you have to redo it for free. So everybody we use down in Galveston, down in uh, Katy, and the Spring, the Woodlands, they're all agents in their specific area that lease the properties. They do a multi-point uh, marketing campaign through websites and everything. We, um, through our website, tenants can view the properties. Uh, they can view a vacant property. They can go online and they can view uh, a vacant property through pictures or we have the agents do a virtual video tour so the tenants can see it either through the MLS or they can go through us. It always ends up coming through us at the end because if the tenant likes what they see and they want to fill out a rent app, they have to do it online on our system. And what happens is the tenant fills out the information, it goes online, they can pay right there because we take credit cards, they pay for their rent app, we're approved through TransUnion to pull credit. So as soon as they do that and they pay for it, we can pull their credit and TransUnion will actually tell us yay or nay whether or not that person's accepted. Obviously, there might be some extenuated information that could cause, you know, uh, to lease or not lease to that person. But it gives them a good information. And this is all information that the tenant has put in. So it's not, you don't fat finger it and put the wrong information in. So uh, we've had a lot of luck with that. Um, evictions, we take care of all the eviction process for you. We have a special eviction agent. They will go from step one to step ten from filing the uh, forcible detainer all the way to meeting the constable at the property. Everything is taken care of. You don't have to worry about the headaches of going back and forth to the court, anything like that. You don't have to deal with it. We take care of it. And we actually would rather take care of it because we've had a lot of owners that have asked us, well, should we let them stay, should we not? And it, and it, it kind of turns into too much of a circus. It's, it's kind of better if they just let us do what we know how to do and our experience as investors and dealing with that particular tenant in that situation, we know what we're doing. If, if the tenant hasn't paid, we're starting the process, we're filing. And most owners are actually happy. They say, you know what, thanks for making that decision because I let someone stay for two months, three months, they ended up not paying. We just step in and take care of it for them. As soon as uh, the constable is at the property meeting the agent for the writ of possession to remove the person, our maintenance guy's right behind them, changing the locks, walking the property, checking the chargeback of what needs to be charged back to the tenant for any vandalism, making up the make ready list that's gonna go to the maintenance company. Um, and once the, our maintenance guy, our internal maintenance guy does that, we're able to know how much to charge that tenant because that and everything else immediately goes to a debt collection agency that we're already tied to. So as soon as that person's out, by the end of the day, that person's already at collection. So if they try to lease anywhere else, they're gonna see it on their credit as a judgment and then the debt collection agency obviously goes after them and do what they do. Um, one thing that uh, we didn't like when we were looking at other management companies is everybody was going to force us to use their people. You have to use our maintenance guy, you have to use this. We don't make any money on it, so we don't care if you use our people or not. You can use your own people. If you say, hey, my uncle's a carpet guy, I'd rather him do the carpet, just give us his information and we'll shoot it over to him. Chances are it's probably not going to be as good of a pricing as we get, but, you know, I mean, if he does it for free and you want to use him, we, we don't care because we don't make any money on the maintenance side. Um, and if it's someone that's good, we might start using them ourselves because we use them for all these processes too. So we're, we're, we're just like you guys. Um, and basically, we have created a company through the eyes of investors for other investors. And, th and that's really what it is. You know, Pete and I... We're in there, we fight the fight, we're doing the deal, we own properties, we know what it's like, we're constantly dealing with it, and collectively, when we have 200 properties, you're gonna look a lot better dealing with the tenant than if you have two or three. And there's, you know, we have properties, $600 properties to $2,500 properties that we both own and manage. Um, we have a D, very, very D class property that we run a 52 unit, you know, so we, we deal with everything. And there's probably not many things that we haven't already experienced that, you know, are just from dealing with stuff, you're going to know, okay, well, this is how we're going. And that's kind of what you're paying for when you're dealing with us. It's not really when things are going good. It's when things go bad. 
and you're, you're wondering and you're second guessing yourself, are you making the right decision? Are you not making the right decision? Um, you know, when Pete and I first started buying houses, you know, we did it more as a retirement idea, the passive income. Well, when that shine kind of wore off and we had to go back to our regular jobs and we still had the phone calls coming in and the problems and the fun was no longer there, we started realizing, okay, we, we have to do something. And we, and we did try to go to a management company, but it just didn't work the way that we wanted it to work. So, you know, now we're able to grow big enough so we can have someone in place to deal with talking to the tenants and to a maintenance person to make sure that he's on our side to have the care to make sure that the tenants are taken care of. You know, the, the bottom line with us is we take care of the owner's assets. We're not interested in making money. Collectively, if we have 300 properties, we're all going to get a better price. We're all going to get better deals from all the vendors we do business with because we're giving a lot of business to somebody. And if we have 400 properties, we're going to make more, a better price for everybody. Um, you know, I'm an airline pilot. He is a, a high IT security job. We don't need to manage people's homes, but it works well because it works for our properties and it works for other people's properties. And, you know, the, the main thing at the end of the day is to manage the owner's asset, keep the cash flow coming in, and keep the expenses as low as possible, and really let them not have the headache or the question of, are these guys ripping me off? Do I, you know, am, am I making the right decision? Should I let the person stay? All they have to do is go online, view the financials, see what's going on. We have everyone in place that takes care of everything that you need to take care of, and you, you can really have a passive investment at that time. So that's pretty much it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. We charge 10%, which is the standard. And, um, you know, we feel that we, we actually feel of what we do and what we offer people, it, it's the amount of money we save people far exceeds it. It, it really does. Yes? Yes, we do. We do, uh, uh, when, we, when we do it through TransUnion, we do a credit criminal check on all of them. 10% of the rent roll. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. No, if if there has to be an eviction, that's a separate charge. I I don't want to charge people if they never have to evict a tenant. So I wouldn't want to up my price for everybody collectively for that. So if you do an eviction, the eviction agent we use charges $150 and they do it from start to finish. So if, if, something, if, if you need the property leased, the leasing agent, we get you in touch with them. Normally, if they lease it themselves, they'll charge half the rent or half the deposit, I guess. If they have another agent involved, then it's the full deposit, which is pretty standard. So it, it's kind of what you need as you go, really. Fair amount of uh, repair money is your deposit? No. Your agreement or? No, we don't, we don't, because we, they wanted us to do that. Yeah, exactly. We, and we, what we do is when bills come in, we will go ahead and front the money. Um, if it's under, what is it? If it's under $250, um, let, let's say a service. Yeah, yeah. So if there's a service ticket that comes in and it's under $250, once we coordinate and the maintenance person goes out there, they have authorization to take care of it. If it's over $250, they're going to call him. He's going to get in touch with you and he's going to uh, say, what do you want to do? Because you could say, you know what, I'll do it myself, don't touch it. Then we tell the guy, don't, don't touch it, the owner's going to take care of it. Is or, there a fee for every time they go out? No, no, go out? no. I mean, if, if, it, if it happens over and over again, we might just say, maybe you should take care of the maintenance yourself, we'll just send it to you. But and whatever lease we have in place, use it, or we have to do the lease prepared by? Yeah, we, whatever, you, whatever you have. Um, as far as we're concerned, like I said, we manage your asset. We're not interested, we have all the people in place because we've needed them for property tax protesting to leasing to everything. But what we do and what we specialize in is making sure your property is run as efficiently as you can. But like I said, if you said I'm a leasing agent and I'll, Winfred, you did yours yourself, right? Yeah, hey, he's a perfect example. He just signed up with us uh, last month, two months ago? Last month, and he, he said I want to lease it myself. And we said no problem. And, you know, just let us know when it's leased. And he said, okay, I got it leased. He sent us his lease. We just said have him sign our addendums. 
so that we know that we're, uh, if it should come to an eviction, we know what we have control over to get the person out or if they should violate the lease, but um, we, we don't care if you use uh, your own stuff. We're fine with that. When the property's leased, how do you charge the realtor? Uh, how does the realtor get paid? Yeah. Uh, they normally get, is it the deposit or first? They, they get first we don't personally, we're not charging you anything. And, oh, yeah, we don't, we're not charging any fees. If, if normally we want everything to start from us for the bookkeeping standpoint, that's what the accountants normally want to see. So everything starts with us, the deposit and everything. If there's a maintenance, something going on with the property, like a maintenance invoice, we will go ahead and we will pay the invoice for you and you'll see it in your register. And you're in the loop because one thing that we do do, the other thing that we do do is whenever there's anything going on with your property, we will send you emails of everything that's going on so that you're in the loop. If your tenant's late paying, if you have a maintenance um, issue, uh, as an example, if, if a tenant has a hot water heater that's out, when the service ticket comes in and our office manager creates a service ticket and sends it to our vendor, the owner is also CC'd on it. So they know something's going on, but we're not, bringing, we're not talking to them, but they understand that something's going on with their property. If they don't hear anything, they'll go ahead and send you a uh, uh, final email saying, property's taken care of, don't worry about it, everything's fine. And that, just so you know, you're not sitting there wondering, hey, did these guys ever take care of it? What was ever done? We'll just say it's done. Once we get the invoice, you'll get another email saying, yeah, there's an invoice, we're gonna go ahead and take care of it. You can check your register, and it's all reflecting on your register, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that, that was our come to Jesus meeting where um, we knew we had to do something different. And that's when we Did it go off again. No, sir. Is it? Okay. And, and so that's, you know, that was one of the worst things that, that we saw. And that lady, of course, was like two, three months late. And that's when we decided to give each other specific jobs and create this, this type of company that would save us from ourselves. And that was four years ago. Yeah, that was four years ago that we had that. Four yeah. or five years ago. Yeah. And, and I, I would love to say that we haven't had any other problems since then, but, but that's not the case. Uh, we, we've, we, you've been in this business long enough, um, you'll, you'll get something. I had, to, I had to go find a beekeeper today. I, I, don't, I don't know of a beekeeper. If anybody's a beekeeper, come see me afterwards. I got a job for you. So <laughs> you're a beekeeper. They do bees. Thank you very much. See? Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, what you mean when they're getting evicted or if they just call for a repair, right? So in a standard lease, there is a maintenance charge. However, um, what we found is that tenants will not call if they get charged uh, a, a fee a lot of times. And what happens is you have a small problem and it turns into a very big problem. Uh, water, plumbing is big, electrical is big. And so we charge a maintenance charge on certain things, broken window, uh, you know, anything that's cosmetic. If we feel they broke it and it, they're negligent, we, we let them know you're going to get charged. But in general, it, it's a fine line because if it's a leaky pipe, they're saying, well, I'm not going to pay 50 bucks, it's not my house. Well, next thing you know, that $50 problem could be a multi-thousand dollar mold problem because you wanted to charge them the $50. So... We, we, we try our best, obviously, you know, to, to temper it, but it, it can be a slippery slope by just saying we're going to charge everybody because you could end up losing, and we've seen some people. Yes? There's a lot of things they could have done, and they probably should have done, but at the end of the day, if they move out and it's your house, you know, okay. it's good, that's... Good luck getting that money from them yeah. on a, you know, $2,000 repair. Well, we agree with you, Absolutely. But they won't call. That's the thing. They, they'll just say, "I'm not. I'm not going to call." And then we go and do the walkthrough, and all of a sudden, you're like, "Whoa, they, these guys have a problem." So, so you know, you're looking at fifty or seventy-five dollars that can cause a, a bigger problem. And, and honestly, we we try to keep the tenants happy as well because our motto is, if you have a, a happy tenant, that's a happy tenant that normally pays, and a happy tenant that pays is a happy owner. And, and so, yeah, you know, it might cost you, you know. 50 bucks here or there, but, but now the tenant feels like they really got good service and they're, they're paying their rent. And so it is a slippery slope. Uh, well, whenever there's a maintenance, obviously our maintenance guys are checking the properties every time they're there. Um, so they are looking 
and they'll let us know, hey, this guy's got a lot of dogs or they're trash in the house. So that they will let us know whenever something's going on. If not, we try to do uh, biannual inspections. We're, we're, we're implementing that. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't have that implemented just yet. Uh, we've been growing so, so rapidly that it is something that we'll be implementing. Uh, yearly? We do. When we renew the leases, uh, we will send, uh, you know, we'll, we'll maybe talk to the owner and say, this is what we're thinking. And, you know, make sure that we're all on the same page because we don't want to go ahead and increase it $25 where it's out of the market range. And all of a sudden the tenant left and the owner says, why'd you guys do that? So, we, again, we try to bring the owner in the loop and we'll let them know this is what we're planning on doing. Maybe talk to uh, the agent in that area, find out what the rent comps are. Have they gone up? Have they gone down? That kind of thing. So our system lets us know every time that there's a, uh, pro a lease that's going to be coming up for renewal. And we'll normally send it out, uh, our plan is to send it out like three months prior so that we kind of have a head start on it so that they know so that it's not last minute. And uh, the way our system operates, if they don't accept, it automatically kicks up to the higher amount that we've put in the parameters for the month to month. If, I'm sorry, if what? No, no. You, you don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it kind of is a case-by-case -case basis. If it's a problem tenant that you want to get rid of, you can do that. You know, if they're a good tenant and they've been there a long time. You know, we have a lot of tenants that are elderly people on Social Security. That's, that's what they pay. We know every month it's coming in. Does it make sense to, to increase it? We don't think so. We'd rather have a tenant that's in there that's not going anywhere. That's just yeah, I mean, you may, you may make 10, 20 bucks extra a month, but what's that make ready going to cost you if they can't afford it? Right. We have one lady. She's been with us since our first, one of our first houses has been with us for six, seven years now. Yep. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't increased our rent. Yeah. We manage your places better than we manage our own, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yep. but she's, she's like clockwork, and she's a great tenant, and so right. we just take care of her. And we still make money on the property. Right. Um, we'll do small apartments. Uh, we we can also do larger apartments on a case by case basis. Uh, we're not we're not willing to jump into what he owns. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we can absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, any anything over four units, we don't just accept. We'll have to look at. Yeah. Uh, because I think everybody here knows from a five unit to like a, a 25 unit, they're just very difficult to manage. Right. But it's, it is doable. Absolutely. Uh, we do six months at first. Um, at call that the dating period. Yeah. Because we, you know, just like you're checking us, we're kind of checking you. And we want to make sure you're someone we want to work with. And we, we don't want someone that isn't kind of a team person with us and understands what we're doing and so you could fire us just like we can fire you after that after the six months then we do a, then we'll say okay it's, it's going to go to a one year but in reality if you don't want us to manage your house we probably don't want to manage it either and it's probably pretty mutual but I, I don't think uh, we maybe have lost one or two clients I mean most owners that come to us they really appreciate the fact that we step up and do the right thing for their properties um, yeah, you know, and they, they normally refer other people to yeah, us. Yeah, we get a lot of referrals from people we have, and they just, they just feel like, you know, we, they feel like they finally have a team that they can rely on, that they don't have to worry about just collecting the rent, that we're actually there, we're taking care of their property, and we're doing the right thing for them. You know, they, because, you know, we own properties and, and all that, a lot of owners like the fact that they can ask us, what would you guys do? How would you guys handle this? And normally it's something that we can bounce the ideas and say, well, we can do this. If it were my property, this is what I would do. And they appreciate that. They're not out there by themselves taking stabs in the dark, wondering if they're doing the right thing or not. At least they have more people to you know, make a decision off of or base their decision And, and we'll on. be the first ones to make. We don't have all the answers, but we do have a lot of them. Um, like I said, every, every day we're getting you know, some new challenges yeah. brought our way. And we have a, a, a vast network of uh, all kinds of people that we do business with from attorneys to maintenance to people in you know uh inspections to i mean you name it i mean if we need a question answered or we need something we pretty much have a direction that we can go to 
to get them to you. And, and you know, we're, if it's a property we're running, we'll go ahead and, and funnel it. But if, it's, if you just say, hey, I've got this property, what would I do? We're just gonna, we'll give you their number. I mean, we're not interested. And in, you know, a lot of people wanna hold their information and not give it out, which I think is kind of dumb. But you know, that, a lot of them, that, that's what they like to do. But we'll just, we'll give you the information. You know, like I said, a lot of people come back to us, refer more people to us. And uh, the maintenance uh, company that we do business with, the owner liked our business model so much, he went and bought about eight houses and he's handed them over to us and we manage his houses for him. And he just, he thinks we have a great product and, and he loves how we manage it, the houses. Oh. Has anybody ever had a hoarder in one of your houses? Yeah. A hoarder in one of your houses? Yeah. You know, like that thing on AMC, hoarders? Yeah. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. We weren't sure if you're stepping on bodies or bags on that in that property. That was that was fun. Yeah. We've had a lot of interesting. Yeah. If you want, you come talk to me afterwards, and <laughs> we could give you all of our war stories. It's yeah. Been, yeah. I don't know why I'm li I left IT to, to do property management. I'm still trying to figure it out, but uh, it's it's definitely something new and challenging every day. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, from the time that a tenant is not current with their rent, how much of a lead time do you allow before you start the process of removing that information? Ten days. Well, we, send the, we send the eviction letter on the 4th. It gets mailed out, so they get it by the 7th, and then we make a couple of phone calls, and then if, not, if they don't pay a dime by the 10th, we're going to the courthouse. And normally at that point, um, it's about 21 days till you have your court date, 14 to 21 days. Um, our person will show up in court. Non-payment of rent is immediate eviction in the state of Texas. They'll tell them you have five days to vacate the premises. We'll come back in five days, we'll get the writ of possession. Constable will call our eviction person, schedule the time. Constable will go to the house, knock on the door, tell them you have 24 hours to vacate or we're coming back to pull you out. Constable will go back to the property with our agent, uh, with our eviction agent and our maintenance guy, knock on the door. Normally they're gone. We've, I, I, we, we've done it, yeah. We, we've we had a few, but mm -hmm. uh, normally that once the constable knocks on the door and says you have 24 hours or I'm Bring coming back. Bring yeah. my marshmallows, my fire, start yeah. making s'mores as they're getting pulled out of the yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they, they, it happens. And uh, Anything else? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because a lot of our owners are out of town too, you have to remember. So even though you live in Houston, we want to treat it that it's a passive investment for you. We don't want you to have to worry about it. And honestly, a lot of times when the owner gets involved, it just causes more problems. It does. It I was does. told buying real estate was a passive investment. Yeah. I still haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> no. Anybody who's a passive investment, let me know. Well, it's passed on to the tenant first. It's passed on to the tenant. So it goes to the tenant's register. So. Right. So if the tenant does come come collect correct and they pay everything, then you guys aren't out any yeah, money. Yeah, the owner doesn't pay anything. But chances it's are, if you're going down that road, they're not paying it, and uh, then yes, the owner ends up paying the, the, uh, our fee anyway. Actually, the court costs and our fee. But we don't we don't send you a bill. We just take it when when the place gets rented. Yeah. We, you we just, just have a negative out. balance with us while the make ready is going on, and then once we get it rented, then it'll it'll get streamed out of the out of the thing. So we're, we're not hitting you up for money saying we need a check. We need we don't do that. If you if you have a lot of properties, if you, have a lot, we you talk to Steve. He's yeah. the master negotiator. Yeah, yeah. We we have people. You know, our whole thing is if you own multiple properties, the last thing I want to do is take all your money. And I, you know, especially if the property is a nicer property, chances are it's less work. You know, we have some five hundred dollar properties. Those are the most work. Then you know the fifteen hundred dollar properties. We've got a guy. He's got a twenty five hundred dollar property. We manage in Midtown. We never even hear from the tenant. I don't really feel right taking 10% from that guy. You know, it's just not right. So we'll, we'll talk and say, well, what's fair? You know, this is what we're doing. What do you think is fair? And we'll come up with something. So, yeah, we have guys that have 15, 20 properties. And we'll say, you know, if, if you come to us with 20, then, yeah, we'll absolutely, we'll work a deal. And if you're going to, if you say, hey, I want to buy some and keep buying them, uh, that's what we do with you, right, Winfred? Yeah, we, we did the same thing with him. We said, okay, if you're going to keep doing it, then we'll, we'll make it lower based on the fact that you're going to, you know, keep buying them, you know, just to, at least then you'll have that number in your head saying, okay, if these guys are going to manage it, I know it's a fixed cost. It's not a percentage. It's, it's a flat fee, and I can factor that into my numbers when I'm buying something to know what that number is. It's like, what, you know, what Dell says, it's, uh, you know, buying property is all about time and money, right? An investor is easy. You just need time and money. Well, um, the more properties you buy, the less time you have. And, and that's kind of where we come in. We alleviate that time for you so you can go ahead and focus on buying more properties. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We do. And the reason is, is we've found that that's actually most of the work of what we're doing comes into play. We take care of getting the power on, scheduling with maintenance, uh, making sure the make readies are done. After the make ready is done, we have to make sure that the property is done correctly, the QA of the job. We coordinate with the leasing agent, either the leasing agent we use, or if you say you have a leasing agent, we coordinate with them, make sure the property is leased. So there's a lot of work going on when that property is vacant, actually, believe it or not. Any other questions? Yes, sir. They normally, um, from what we've seen in general, is they'll charge a one-month deposit um, to lease the property. The, one of the agents we use, she will only charge half if it's just her. So if there's not another agent on the other side, she'll only charge half. So if it's $1,000, she'll just charge 500 If there's another agent involved, then obviously she's going to go ahead and, and, and charge the full. Yeah, like I said, if you want to do it yourself, we have some guys that say, I'll, I'll lease the property myself, and then I'll hand it over to you guys, like Winfred did, and we're, we're fine with that. But normally, you know... Uh, it's going to lease a lot quicker when you have an agent. But sometimes it's hard to give up that cash flow, you know, to give up that, that uh, you know, $1,000. So it's just, you know. We've gone through quite a few. We have a very good core. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've, all the agents that, that we use are ones that we've actually used ourselves on our own properties. And we've got it fine-tuned to about four or five different agents around Houston. And they do a great job because it, it's really performance based. If, if the property's sitting for a couple months, they're obviously not performing. We got to go find someone else. I mean, it's just you know. And, and if the we're 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 calling them weekly. We have weekly calls with them, and we're we're yeah. we're staying on top of the agents, finding out what's going on, why is it not leasing, is there anything that we missed, that, you know? And and uh, they'll say, well, the grass hasn't been cut. All right, let's go cut the grass, you know. <laughs> Yeah, little thing, little minor you know, details. we're paying, we have power on at this property the whole time. So we're paying, we're footing the bill for this power and stuff. So, you know, obviously, and the owner's got, you know, the owner's got an empty house. We know what it's like, you know, and they don't want it just to be out in, you know, la la land with nobody paying attention to it. So we're, we're constantly, we have weekly meetings with all the agents to see where we at on this it, deal. It, and 
you know, fortunately, we're in a strong rental market, and so we've seen less than less than six weeks about to get to get places rented. We've seen two weeks. We've we've seen it one day, yeah. and, and we've seen about six weeks uh, for for the longest. I'd say average is three to four. Uh, yeah, usually within a month, we're getting the places rented. Yeah, and the the key to that is these tenants aren't punching out down the road. They're staying in the property. So, however, they're finding the tenants. You know, they screen the tenants, and they get with the owner to give them their opinion. The owner always has the final say. If the owner says, you know what, I don't like it, it's the owner's property. You know, I wanna know who's going in my property. So we wanna know who it is. We have our uh, requirements that we give them and you know, two and a half times the, uh, the rent and income, two to three, no felonies, no evictions, that stuff. But you know, the, the true test is the person they're putting in, are they staying for the duration? Are they a problem tenant? If, this person is putting in problem tenant after problem tenant in all these different properties, maybe there's a problem with the agent. It's not all the tenants, it's the agent doing it. And then we you know, have to revise who we have in that area. But right now, we've got a pretty good set of, of people that we do business with. Yes, sir. There are a lot. There are a lot. But when you have 200 properties and you're constantly, you know, if you're doing 10 properties a month that you're leasing for the, these agents are getting, it's not, it's not a ton of money, but it's, it's good residual for them, constant. And we're, yeah. Yeah, and we're hand feeding it to these agents. So we have, a, we have some power with these agents because we're, we're hand feeding it to them. And if they don't perform, we're just going to take our toys and go over here and talk to someone else. And we're going to. Yeah, I mean, their, their business is going to dry up in a day. Yes, sir. Yeah, so no, normally it's, it's going to be one month, you know, the first month's rent and then a one month security deposit, unless, of course, they're, they're purple Martians, right, or, or, uh, or green, green Martians or whatever. And then um, it's, it might be two or three times. We try not to take any Martians. Uh, especially in the nicer homes like in Katy and Spring and, and Northwest. But uh, Steve and I, unfortunately, we our homes are in Purple Martianville, and so we <laughs> take a lot of Purple Martians, unfortunately. Uh, now, there are still good tenants there, and, you know, if somebody has something in their past, you know, we explain to them, you know, a perfect tenant is here, this is your deposit. You're not a perfect tenant, so your deposit's going up now. If you don't like it, that's fine. But, but, but typically it's going to be first month's rent and then, yes. for, and then a, um, a deposit. Yes. Is there a law on how much you can ask for? I think three times is the law, I believe. And the agent would know because they're the ones that are leasing it. What's the going rate for pet deposits? We don't charge a pet deposit. We charge a pet fee, non-refundable, and it really depends on the size of the animal. Yeah, we do it by weight of the animal. But yeah, it's Normally not about 200 to $300. Yeah, it's not a pet deposit because the deposit you have to give back. And chances are that dog is going to do damage whether you know it or not, eventually. But my dog's an outside dog. Yeah, He'll never my dog's, be in the house. Yeah, exactly. So it's a fee for having the dog. Yeah. Again, just things we've learned over time. Been there, know, done that. <laughs> we had a property that was, con a detective called us, and uh, they told us when they raided our house that uh, there was 40 cases of stolen vodka from a semi that was hijacked. Oh, no. And well, weapons <laughs> and drugs and children. And, and I said, wait a second. Did you say when you raided our house? And he says, yeah. <laughs> so we've Sir, got you had a nice. question in the back? <laughs> you charge a similar fee for smokers. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, of course, anybody who smokes never smokes in the house, um, we find. Or they don't uh, tell you And really, that's, that's, that's a case-by-case -case basis. And a, an agent, if they, sh they need to disclose that to the agent, a lot of times they don't. And the agent will get with you and, and find out if you want to take them and if you want to charge them more money for a smoke to be a smoker. The problem is, is when you go to evict someone for, let's say, something like that, evicting them for the violation of the lease is, is pretty tough. So what you can do is uh, you can assess them a fee. That fee uh, it goes to rent first. Well, all money goes to other fees first and then rent. Yeah, so basically they end up getting evicted for non-payment of rent. So when we go to court, it's, it's not for them smoking. It's because they violated the lease. They got hit with the fee. We paid the fee. Now they have uh, a deficit of rent, and that's what we're evicting them for. So that's kind of a way around it. 
That's what we just, learned. It's just very simple to, to file evictions for non-payment of yeah. rent, and it's very difficult, and you actually need a lawyer if you're going to file yeah. for eviction for, uh, for breaking a lease. Right. Uh, Which uh, you, you can do that, but it, it's, it's a lot easier the other way, we, we found. Yep. Yep. Correct. Oh yeah. 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 W and we normally, when we have the agents sign the leases, we we just have them, we we would rather them use standard Trek leases because if there's another agent involved or anything, it's our addendums that we have. We've got about 15 pages of addendums that they have to sign for just trial. You know, years of us being battle scarred of experience of things that we've had. You know, um, we I had I got sued by a tenant once because. The refrigerator wasn't working, and she sued me for it because she was getting evicted. She was a pauper. She was a squatter. She was squatting in the house. And the only reason I got saved is because my lease addendum said that all appliances are there as a convenience, and if they should break, we'll remove them for free, but they're not required to be there. And that was the only thing that saved me from getting sued, from not having to pay. But I still had to pay $4,000 in attorney fees. You know? But so. you have a Pretty much. That we know of. That we've know. experienced. I mean, everything that we've, you know, said, okay, I'm we're sure not going to do that again. one tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's just it. Yeah, I mean, we, we you know, you, instead of you guys learning on your own, like, like we did, I mean, you, you can basically come with us and just say, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take care of this. This is our experience. And kind of ride on our backs, if you will. Anybody else? We always do because the agents, when they're leasing the property, take pictures and they do a video. So we, we do have pictures on file of the, of the thing, of the, of the house. So yeah. Oh, Le legally, you have to put them in every bedroom. So, so when they we, do the make ready, the make ready guys, that's part of the make ready. Yeah, our, our default make ready package has a fire extinguisher and smoke detectors in every bedroom. Yeah. Yes, sir. Texas City to Conroe to Katy to Humble to we we manage houses. We own houses all in those areas, so we manage them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we won't go to Dallas. <laughs> Sir. Yeah, we, we basically uh, we basically do turnkey, and, and like I said before, it, it's almost better when the owner just stays out of our way, as mean as that sounds, because we it, it, we have so many systems going in place, and we have so much going on that we really have a very good system going on with our maintenance people to our leasing people. Everyone's in contact. When a make ready's done, they're contacting the agent. The agent shows up at the property, walks it with the maintenance guy. I mean, we just, we have so many wheels turning that it, it really is a turnkey operation and the owner doesn't have to do anything. And we'd rather it that way because we used to try to include owners and get their opinions on stuff, just trying to be nice. And it really just messed up a lot of things because everyone has a different opinion and they're really hiring us for our knowledge and our experience and, and our expertise of what we're doing. So But yes, we could we could lease it, get the make ready done, um, and, and manage it. You, yeah. you could go find the next property. You can basically see the house once when you buy it and never have to see it again. Yeah. We can. Yeah. We can. You can do it yourself if you want and then hand it to us. But yeah, we have everybody in place that can do it. And it's all the same pricing, like I said, that we've already negotiated with all these vendors. So it's Chance of you beating it or slim to none unless you're going to do it yourself, probably. Or your uncle. Or your uncle. Yes, sir. For a make ready? Um, so let's say a tenant moves out. We walk it. We get a bid normally within, well, we walk it normally within two days. We get a bid within three, and then they, they can actually create most make ready's within three days. So normally about two weeks total, and it's ready to go. If it's a standard make ready scenario yeah but if it's you know the the company um uh that we use that does the make readies i mean they have the ability to to rebuild the house if we needed it so they have they have their own uh qa manager that 
does it and then it gets sent out to everybody else but i mean you know plumbing, they, they do everything we just did a yeah. fire restoration um, yeah in, in one month i gave them a fire restoration a rehab and like five make readies and, and they knocked them all out of the park they, they do mostly apartment complex rehabs and major fire remediation but basically when we went and talked to the owner and sat down with him and told him what we wanted and he really liked what we did he said if you give us all your business i'll give you the same pricing like you own 500 units he said you you, you will not be able to beat my pricing and like you said true we, to his word so yeah far. he's true to his word and we you know and, and they, that doesn't mean we go out and look at look. Uh, get bids every once in a while yeah, just to make just sure like to keep make sure. honest yeah but so far they've been, just done a fantastic job like i said we've saved 40 percent year to date on our maintenance costs personally so we know the we see our numbers we, and we, we would what they are. yes uh, yes we would actually project manage the, the rehab or the make ready for you yeah, I mean, I, I, I've never done anybody that did it with a hard money loan, but I mean, yeah, I would imagine. I mean, this is a contracting company, so I mean, they, they are, you know, they give a, a bid based on, and it's a line item bid that they give, so when he... Some of the rehab stuff's not because oh, they dump Oh, if it's it, a major rehab, yeah, I mean... They dump some stuff in to kind of... Uh, bulk it. Bulk it up and save cost. Yeah, but in general, like I said, they, you know, and he'll, he'll send it to you, and then you can discuss, you know, he could say, you know, my opinion, maybe you don't need to replace a carpet. Maybe we can get it cleaned or stretched. Or, in, in, that, in that respect, we, we, we act like a, uh, like a title company. So if you have a big make ready or something, I, I'm not going to be able to flow like a $5,000 make ready. So I'm going to ask for some of that money, if not half or all of it. But what I'll do is I'll hold it. And then when, when, the, when we've finally finalized the walkthrough with the company and we feel that everything is done according to what, what, was, on the, uh, what was on the bid, then we'll release the money. So yeah, at least your money is kind of safe, and you can say, you know what, he didn't. If, if he didn't do the job, we're not going to pay. The him. way we do the checks and balances on that is, as I said, when the tenants evict, let's just say the tenant was evicted and the writ was done, and the maintenance guy walks the property, uh, and then he hands it off to the maintenance company to give the bid. That maintenance guy is the last one back at the property with the agent, so he was the first one to see it when it was all trashed. He's the last one to see it, so he makes sure that everything that he said was supposed to be on the list is done. So if something isn't done, he can go back to, before the leasing agent starts advertising it, he goes back to the maintenance company and says, hey, you guys are supposed to do this. This wasn't done. So he's kind of our checks and balances to make sure the jobs are done correctly. And, and normally they do miss some small items. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and have the leasing agent, you know, take the pictures and advertise the property because we don't want to, to, to slow that process down. But in the same, at the same time, we're going back to the to the make ready company and saying, "Hey, you missed the closet rod here. You know, it gets down, it gets yeah. down that granular. Yeah. You know, there's a spot that was mold here or whatever." And they they step up and do the right thing. They always have. Managing the rehab, yeah. We we just get a bid and we send it off to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's we we do we do charge uh, like 150 dollars to project manage it because because it does take my time because I'm going out there and, and looking at stuff and, and whatnot. So we do charge a small fee. But normally, like I said, the pricing they're giving you is, we, we don't know how they get, I mean, obviously it's the volume that these, this company does that they're able to give us this pricing because we, we have no idea how they can do it. All right, guys, any other questions? Okay. Yeah, if not, I can have a card. I can give it to you after. Sure. All right, mm -hmm. All right guys, well, appreciate it. Thank you.